Before we get back to music, though, every week we get to introduce you to somebody we um, know has inspired other people, basically. These are folks who are doing good work in their communities, and sometimes they're volunteers who started with a small step, you know, growing something bit by bit into a full-fledged program that can have a huge impact. This time it's actually somebody I read about in The New Yorker almost a year ago, and I was so inspired by this story that we... Uh, kept asking and finding out if we could bring this person to join us here, and it worked out that we did. So we're really excited about that. Here's Helen to tell you what's coming up. Thank you, Nick. You know, I know for many of us, 3D ocean farming sounds like a strange combination of words. But our next guest is a former fisherman who, after watching fish stocks become decimated by industrial fishing and seeing the devastating effects industrial agriculture and climate change are having on our oceans, has come up with a 3D ocean farm concept that could literally solve a lot of the world's problems while putting lots of folks to work. Now, this concept would produce healthy, sustainably harvested food and affordable biofuels. It could also restore ocean health and significantly impact the world's hunger problem while mitigating the effects of climate change and reviving coastal economies. Well, here to tell us more is our guest this week, kelp farmer and founder of the nonprofit called Green Wave, Bren Smith. Welcome to E-Town, Bren. Thanks, you, thanks for joining. I'm so glad this worked out. Uh, it's my pleasure. So, uh, so you went to sea at an early age, didn't you? Yeah, I dropped out of high school when I was 14. I was born and raised up in Newfoundland, Canada. So at 14, I went out and fished the Grand Banks, the Georges Banks, to chase lobster, tuna. And then I headed to the Bering Sea where I did cod and crabs. So sort of you name it, I fished it. And that was, uh, that was at the height of, you know, big, that was big scale fishing, industrial scale fishing. Yeah, I was, it was, you know, I was a kid and I didn't know. And it was the height of pillaging. So we'd tear up entire ecosystems with our trawls. Most of the fish I was catching was actually going to McDonald's for their fish sandwiches. We were fishing illegally uh, in, in uh, foreign waters. But at the same time, I loved the work, right? Yeah. The sense of solidarity of working in the belly of a boat with 13 other people, the sense of meaning that comes with helping feed my country. They were sort of the best years of my life, but it just wasn't sustainable. Yeah. And at some point, you became disillusioned. Yeah. Well, the cod stocks crashed back in Newfoundland in my home, and it was amazing to watch an ecological collapse, how it impacted people. So it wasn't just about birds and bees, but... Thousands of fishermen thrown out of work overnight, boats, beach, canneries emptied. And so that was a wake-up call for a whole generation of us. And I went on a search for sustainability. Yeah. And I know you had a couple stops along the way, but you landed in this sort of 3D ocean farming uh, concept. Is it suspended from the surface of the sea? Or how, does, how does it work? Yeah, so imagine an underwater garden. So we have these hurricane-proof anchors with lines going up to the surface and then horizontal uh, lines across the surface, sort of like a basic scaffolding yeah. system. Is it like a buoy at the top of these lines? A buoy at the yeah. top, yeah. yeah. And from there we hang, we grow our kelp vertically downwards. Next to that we've got mussels and scallops also growing vertically downward. And then below that we have cages with oyster in, oysters in them and then clams in the mud. And the idea is really how many different kinds of species can we grow in 20 acres? but not any kind of species, restorative species, species that require zero inputs. So everything we grow requires no water, no fertilizer, no feed, making it hands down the most sustainable form of food wow. production on the planet. Yeah. No, uh, so you don't, you, don't have to, uh, you don't have to improve the scenario other than just find the right spot to start with and make sure you build it right. Yeah, Mother Nature came up with these incredible technologies millions of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> And my job is just to grow them, to encourage them. Yeah. So, uh, so, so it's 20 acres you mentioned. How big is that when you're looking at it from the shore, when you're looking at one of these farms, what does it look like? So the wonderful thing about our farming is that there's nothing to see. I do boat tours all the time, and they get out there, and they're like, this is terrible. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the worst tour ever. But that's an Im important thing, because our oceans are these beautiful, pristine places, and we want to protect the aesthetics. So all you see is a number of buoys across um, the surface, and anybody can boat, swim, or fish in my farm. So we're not privatizing, we're actually protecting the commons. Wow. So, so uh, the kelp is what's growing, and that's a, is, that, is that a fast-growing uh, product? Yeah, it's one of the fastest growing plants in the world, and it soaks up five times more carbon than land-based plants. 
um, you once said that we should eat more like fish uh, mm -hmm. rather than eating fish. Mm -hmm. what's, what's that all about? So we're really trying to rearrange the seafood plate to put bivalves and sea plants in the center and then wild fish to the edges. And I say it's time to eat like fish because if fish don't make omega-3s and all these wonderful nutrients we need, they eat them. So by eating like fish, we get the benefits while reducing pressure on fish stocks. And the important thing to understand, like kelp is a great gateway drug into 10,000 edible plants in the sea. And so uh, can, you, can you make some money doing this? Yeah. I mean, the new face of environmentalism can't be just about conservation. Right? It has to be about jobs. It has to be lifting communities out of poverty while we address the, the climate crisis and other environmental issues. So we designed our farm to be extremely replicable for everyday people like me. So anybody with 20 acres in a boat, and $20,000 can start their own farm and be up and running the first year. And that's the engine of replication. Like you design for simplicity. Right. And we also, also open sourced our model. Uh, everybody wanted to franchise it. We insisted on open sourcing it so anybody can start it. And we have now have requests to start farms in every coastal state in North America and 40 countries around the world. Wow. 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 So what about your fellow fishermen? Hmm. I'm trying to imagine this group of people who are just still stunned at the fact that the lifestyle they've known, generations, um, it's just not, not there for them now. Are they open to this concept, or do they think you're kind of a, a nut? Well, I was definitely getting laughed off the water. Yeah. Um, and I can't hang out at the same bar as I used to. You know, I, I have to like, go hang out with the arugula bar, uh, farmers, which is really boring <laughs> for a fisherman. But um, I've got an 11th generation fi uh, fisherman who's been out of work, who's starting his own farm now. I've got a third generation lobsterman. I mean, there are no lobsters in Long Island Sound now, so he's shifting over. Um, the economy and the ecological collapse is forcing people to do this. But what I say to fishermen is, we can't chase fish anymore. But we can keep the core of our identity, which is not having a boss, working on the water, succeeding, succeeding and failing on your own terms, having, having a self-directed life, and helping feed the country. And so there we keep, to, we keep the jobs, which I say we can still write songs about, and that's the core as we transition into something else. Yeah, well, great. Thanks, yeah. Thanks Bren. Thank you. Thanks for sharing this information. And uh, don't forget, if you, want to get, if you want to get some more information, it's greenwave.org. Yeah. And there's educational components, there's some, some youth uh, engagement, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, I'm just really excited about what you're working on, and I'm glad we were finally able to get you here. Yeah, absolute honor yeah. to be here. Thanks, Thanks. so much. Once yeah. again, Bryn Smith. Yeah. You want more information, greenwave.org.